Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today for your Tuesday the 7th of May forecast update we have a significant amount of rainfall on the forecast for eastern Australia especially around the Sydney area and further south. We've got some good rainfall also inbound for central Queensland from a thunderstorm event expected. A strong cold front expected to impact southwest and western Australia. That tropical low is still in the Arafura Sea which is giving us a little bit of confusion on the forecast models and a monster typhoon expected to develop in the Philippines. See, So a lot to get through in this forecast update. We're going to start things off with New South Wales before heading up into central Queensland to talk about what's going on there. Right now it is a clear day across New South Wales and these clear conditions are expected to continue for the next couple of days, especially uh, throughout today, tomorrow and into Wednesday as well. We're not expecting hardly any rainfall across the entire state. Just a couple of showers are possible but, uh, for locations along the coastline, but again, nothing crazy in terms of rainfall uh, before this weekend really does wetten up quite significantly. Uh, but yeah, hopefully these conditions remain relatively calm and dry because what's coming on the weekend is going to be quite significant. You can see as we get through Wednesday and Thursday, just a little bit of rainfall expected here and there, nothing crazy or nothing to write home about but through central Queensland and also into New South Wales we're expecting a big thunderstorm event to start developing from a pretty strong upper level uh, rotating low pressure system uh, which is going to be driving some good rainfall and thunderstorm activity from Friday morning into Friday afternoon and that's going to be drawing in a lot of moisture on the New South Wales coastline basically from Friday morning. On Friday I would expect up to 50 millimetres on any location between Coffs Harbour right down towards Naruma or Batemans Bay and that includes Wollongong and Sydney which are likely to actually be the wettest of locations along the coastline. I'm also expecting good rainfall totals between 20 and 40 millimetres for inland locations around Coba, uh, up towards Lightning Ridge and um, some other remote locations through northern and northwestern New South Wales. The rainfall could penetrate as far south and as far east as well as Dubbo uh, and Coba as well. We're expecting some good rainfall totals there uh, right up towards Saturday before the real deal starts to develop Saturday evening. We're going to be seeing a strong rotating low pressure system start to develop probably over the Blue Mountains from Saturday evening and as that gets itself over the coastline it's going to be drawing in a huge moisture band which will be colliding with the New South Wales coastline around Wollongong or Batemans Bay or Jervis Bay and that uh, will be providing some very significant rainfall accumulations there. Probably a further 100 to 150 millimetres on top of the 50 to 100 millimetres that this area of the coastline would have received from the preliminary showers event. So between 150 to 250 millimetres is possible for the wettest of locations, which will likely be around Wollongong. It looks like Sydney does get spared from the worst of the rainfall, but that does not mean that they get uh, hardly any rainfall. They'll be receiving quite a significant amount. And also very good model congruency between the Access G3 and the Eastern Rebair Forecast Model, two of the best forecast models to be using for a forecast like this. Uh, they're both calling for this low pressure system to develop, which I don't think will be classifiable as an east coast low just because its winds won't be strong enough um, and it'll kind of just be too far spread out to be classified as an east coast low but it does look like one and it will likely look a little bit like one on a satellite imagery but don't be fooled it's not going to be like a full-blown east coast low and you'll feel it it just won't feel as strong as a quintessential east coast low but right now looking like a pretty wet weekend and into early next week uh, for parts of the New South Wales coastline and if we take a look at rainfall accumulation over the next three days nothing crazy expected up towards 30 or 40 millimeters around Wollongong it's just preliminary rainfall and then as we get in towards the 10-day forecast period we're talking about rainfall accumulations up to 200 millimeters uh, minimum probably up towards 220 or 230 in the right location around Udala uh, all, um, and Bateman Bay as well down towards Naruma. The Eastern Bay going a little bit crazier in terms of rainfall. They're calling for closer to 300 millimetres, especially as you get a little bit further inland around the mountains. Uh, you'll be seeing significant rainfall accumulations there. I don't think that 300 millimetres is possible at this time. That's definitely pushing it in terms of a maximum rainfall accumulation. But once again, it is possible from a weather event like this and I must say as well very good rainfall accumulations expected inland we're talking about up to a hundred millimeters for some locations it looks like areas around Burke or Coba will be the wettest of places but there we can't be riding out other areas expecting some significant amounts of rainfall and in short at least 25 millimeters will fall for probably about 70 percent of the New South Wales uh, state as well it looks like a really really good rainfall event especially for the north and the northeast um, and down towards 
the southeast as well. Maybe the extreme western parts of New South Wales will miss out, but it still does look like some decent rainfall expected for parts of New South Wales, which is fantastic to see because it's rainfall, the consistent rainfall, 80 millimetres falling over 24 to 36 hours that they really need. It's not going to be intense thunderstorms providing this rainfall. It'll be those consistent light to moderate showers that provide that 80 to 90 millimetres of rainfall. So fantastic news on the rainfall front for there. Um, it does get a little bit more concerning, however, for areas around Wollongong and Sydney. Uh, 300 millimetres over 24 hours is a little bit scary on the forecast, but again, that's on the absolute upper echelon. And if I was to make an accurate prediction, I'm probably talking about 180 to 230 millimetres falling over about 48 to 60 hours. So not as crazy as what some of the forecast models are suggesting, but still a significant amount of rainfall. And we can't be ruling out some possible flooding in some areas, especially flash flooding as well. Just briefly taking a look at maximum wave heights as well. Sunday afternoon into Monday morning, they will be at their largest. But even around shore, they're only about four metres. And I do say only because some of these east coast lows can throw out waves about six or seven metres high. So four metres is definitely uh, a bit of good news there. Um, and it doesn't look like it gets any higher than about four or 4.5 metres. So Again, exercise caution if you are in and around the water. I don't know what you'd be doing in the water, especially Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. Even surfing would be getting quite hazardous with a five metre swell at some areas. Uh, but just take extra care, especially if you are walking around uh, a coastal area. But yeah, uh, that should basically cover the Sydney uh, forecast and the New South Wales weather forecast. There is a lot on the way, but it is pretty simple in terms of understanding it. There'll be more coverage on this system as well, especially as it draws closer to the day. It is still around five days away from now. Now we're going to talk about central Queensland because there is some rainfall expected for central Queensland in the form of some thunderstorms, especially from the Axis G3 model. The eastern wave isn't actually predicting it yet, but we're going to be looking at a trough extending down at the western parts of Queensland starting from about Wednesday, so tomorrow actually, and this will start some thunderstorms on Wednesday evening into Thursday and Friday, and these thunderstorms will slowly march across New South Wales and Queensland before rotating into that low pressure trough and that will actually be the precursor sort of system for the New South Wales weather that we're expecting but some pretty good rainfall accumulations are also possible in central and uh, western Queensland as well. We could be seeing up towards 40 or 50 millimetres in some areas, certainly enough to start some uh, riverine flooding, that's for sure. So 50 millimetres definitely pushing it on the upper level of what we want up there, uh, falling in a six hour period. So it's definitely some heavy rainfall totals are possible. Make sure you are exercising caution around roads or river crossings because there is a good chance that they do flood or approach flooding levels and thresholds because a lot of the rivers through here are already at moderate to major flooding alerts because of what's happening far north Queensland over the past four or five months so don't be fooled 50 millimeters on its own is probably enough to, uh, not enough to cause moderate to major riverine flooding but when you've already got moderate river flooding uh, occurring then 50 millimeters will be more than enough to push it towards major uh, as well so make sure you are exercising caution around roads if you are driving or moving uh, a truck through that area because it could be quite hazardous uh, indeed next weekend but yeah apart from that nothing too insane going on we're not looking at two or 300 millimeters which we have looked at for uh, before on the forecast models and there by saturday and sunday we'll be moving in towards southeastern queensland causing a little bit of rainfall there but Apart from that, nothing too crazy in terms of huge rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days across central Queensland and great congruency between the Eastern Rift and the Axis G3. If anything, the Axis is just about 100 kilometres towards the west on the forecast, but those details will iron themselves out, uh, even though they do have drastic impacts on what uh, rainfall is expected for what locations, those details will iron themselves out over the coming couple of days. But it does look like a pretty good forecast right now for parts of Queensland and New South Wales. Significant rainfall accumulations as well for far north Queensland, which we'll just talk about briefly. We're talking about up towards 180 to 200 millimetres for the next 10 days. But again, it doesn't all fall at once and it is pretty consistent over the next 10 days. So we're just looking at some showers expected to line themselves up along the coastline uh, all throughout next week and next weekend uh, and also this week as well. So nothing crazy, nothing that's going to cause some moderate to major flooding, but do exercise caution on the roads next week because it is going to be a wet one by the looks of things. 
Now it's time to talk about what's happening on Friday for Western Australia. It looks like we've got another thunderstorm event lining itself up for the southwest, including Perth. And look at that, that's the first winter cold front. It's the first strong winter cold front by the looks of things impacting the Perth area. And it looks like from this forecast that it's going to be a strong one. The Eastern Rebif very much on board with it. The Access G3 calls for basically nothing to impact the Perth area. And the GFS calling for a little bit of something in between. They're not calling for a strong front at all, but they are calling for a little bit of rainfall around the Perth area. And to be precise, over the next five days uh, or 10 days, actually, you're expecting probably 20 to 25 millimetres around the Perth area from the GFS. From the Eastern Bay, if you're talking more like 25 millimetres in the access close to zero, <laughs> about 10 millimetres uh, there. Uh, but yeah, it looks like there's going to be some nice rainfall uh, occurring there and also some rainfall into this weekend as well from another low pressure system expected to develop across or just offshore. And that's again reciprocated by all major forecast models or a low pressure system at least uh, expected to develop there. But um, um, yeah, some thunderstorms happening. It is actually a pretty confusing forecast by the looks of things. I'm just going to zoom out and take a look at this again because, yeah, Eastern Relief expecting that initial front to move through and then another front to move through from the Eastern Relief forecast model delivering a little bit more rainfall there. The GFS also expecting the sort of second front to move through too, which could have some strong rainfall and thunderstorms in it Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. And the Access G3 expecting a full-blown severe thunderstorm event to be possible from a low-pressure system just offshore but it kind of does just miss the Perth area in terms of the worst of the possible conditions, but still, it does look like there is a good chance for at least 20 millimeters of rainfall over the next 10 days in the Perth area. The Bureau of Meteorology not 100% sold on it yet, and it hasn't really reached their forecast, but I imagine it will tonight. I've been looking at this for the last couple of days, and I'm getting very, very hopeful indeed. It does only look like, however, it's going to be concentrated into the southwest region of Western Australia and the Perth metro. The wheat belt doesn't really get much. Maybe the Great Southern gets a little bit, but especially as you get further inland past the Great Southern and highway, you're talking about very much minimal rainfall accumulations, unfortunately, which is not great news because they are very thirsty for some rainfall in land. Uh, but yeah, that basically does it for the West Australian rainfall. Now for part four of the video, we're going to be talking about this developing tropical low up in the Arafura Sea. Now I have been um, giving this probably too much attention, but you really can't see too much going on in terms of convective activity. There is actually quite a lot going on over New Guinea, but it is mainly just thunderstorm focused. Uh, right now, there is no real rotating tropical low uh, as these really do struggle to load in this satellite imagery. Uh, but I'll just cut to the chase here. It's only the the GFS expecting some kind of uh, formation from this tropical low or tropical cyclone and it happens next Tuesday and Wednesday so once again it's been pushed back by another week uh, the formation of this tropical low or tropical cyclone so I'm not a hundred I'm definitely not a hundred percent sold I'm not even 50 percent sold on this ever becoming a system worth worrying about and certainly not one worth worrying about for the Australian mainland but it is just funny that the GFS is still calling for tropical cyclone genesis into mid-May which is quite strange especially for this corner of a Australia up in the Arafura Sea, but it will be driven by a significant typhoon in the Philippine Sea, which I'll talk about in just a minute. This uh, tropical low, however, regardless of development, will still cause some significant rainfall accumulations over New Guinea and parts of Indonesia and Timor, where you could be seeing up towards four or 500 millimetres for some places, uh, maybe even a little bit more under the right rain cloud as well. So if you are watching from New Guinea or Indonesia, first off, hello, welcome to the channel. But second off, you could be in for some pretty significant rainfall. And that also goes for far north Queensland and parts of the Northern Territory too. May generally is a very dry month where only a couple of millimetres fall. You can still see some thunderstorms in early May, but especially as you get towards mid-May, you don't have the prospect of a thunderstorm dropping 25 millimetres over a wide part of the Northern Territory uh, on the forecast, which is sort of what we've got here. We do have have uh, on the forecast around Nullan by and Cape Wessel up towards 20 or 25 millimetres possible in the next 10 days and that is quite a lot of rainfall to be falling over what is essentially a pretty widespread span of area and it's the same for far north Queensland expecting some rainfall there. 
And finally, to end this video off, we're gonna be talking about this strong typhoon. It's not developing yet, and it's not expected to develop over the next uh, five or six days, but you can already see the precursor satellite uh, or uh, convection on the satellite imagery through here, south of Guam, in fact, very much south of Guam, at around at three and a half degrees north, 148 degrees east. It's gonna be tracking across the southern, uh, southern Philippine Sea until it gets itself south of Yap, when development is expected to occur next week, Monday and Tuesday. We wrap it in intensification is also possible as it blows in towards Tacloban and the central Philippines and it has been a hot second since I tracked a Philippine typhoon so I'm going to have to polish up my geography big time but there will be plenty of coverage on the Cyclones Extra channel and if this system does get strong uh, priority will be going to that system if nothing is going on in Australia but it does definitely look like a strong system is on the cards going in for the central Philippines around Cebu and Tacloban uh, and it could be a very dramatic start to the typhoon season of 2020. 24. Now onto the GFS model as well because they're expecting something very strong to develop starting from this weekend into early next week onto Monday, becoming a typhoon probably around Monday and then rapid intensification really does kick in. A severe typhoon expected to occur uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday as approaches category three status on the Saffir Simpson scale. And for those of you watching in Australia, it looks like the pressure might just be low enough next Wednesday and Thursday for this to be classifiable as a category five severe tropical cyclone on the Australian scale. Now that's nothing earth shattering in the Western Pacific. It happens all the time. You get about 10 systems qualifying for category five status on the Australian scale every single typhoon season up there. And that's why they don't use the Australian scale there. First of all, it's not in Australia, but second of all, it's just, a, it's too weak the Australian scale to really classify typhoons accurately there because almost every system gets to category five status. It really is the Rolls Royce of typhoons up there in the Philippine Sea. But in terms of peak winds from the GFS, mind you, which is the low ball of forecast models, we're talking about sustained winds of around 100 knots or about 90 knots here. And I generally add about 30 or 40% onto those forecasts and just skip straight to wind gusts to have a look at peak wind speeds. And we're now talking about 100 knot winds through here, which I also do think might be a little bit of low balling here. This typhoon, if it does get that pressure of 945 millibars, it'll likely bottom out with wind speeds of around 115 knots. That's category four status on the Saffir Simpson scale. And it will give the Philippines a really good scare as well. But yeah, it looks like a powerful system and it looks like it could cause some pretty serious damage to the Philippines if it does go there. But that doesn't look like something on the forecast at this time. And believe it or not, these typhoons do have a significant impact on the Australian climate as well, especially for Northern Australia. They pull all of the moisture up from Northern Australia into the deeper tropics, and they do often cause some drier than usual conditions for Northern Australia, uh, especially through the Northern Territory. So if you are uh, watching the forecast quite closely next Monday onwards, it could be a dry week next week. The humidity will likely be a little bit less. Those winds from the Southeast will be a little bit stronger and conditions could be a little bit warmer as well but feel that that uh, that a couple of degrees cooler because of the lack of humidity but yeah that is a very long-winded video update the longest that i've made in quite a few months pushing 18 minutes now thank you so much for watching and putting up with my voice this tuesday morning i apologize for the lack of an update yesterday i woke up and i just wasn't feeling uh quite well so i skipped the update and there really wasn't much going on but today i think i've made it up with an 18 minute forecast video if you've got any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below be really responding to all of them today. That is today's objective. I hope you have a great day at work or school or wherever you're heading off to today. Enjoy your Tuesday. Bring on the weekend. I feel like it, I deserve that weekend already. Uh, and yeah, that is all from me and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.